going to hand it over to you, Steve, first, just to get the conversation going, and then we'll uh, we'll bring in uh, Bruce and Rudy, and um, hopefully, Zig, you can stick around because I know you've got a lot of expertise in this area, and you might want to contribute as well. But um, over to you, Steve, first. All right, thank you. Let me share my screen. So we have Google Apps Script, and by default, we are in Google Drive, and we can uh, create a new Google Apps Script where it's a standalone. Um, so let's talk about standalones versus contained scripts. So let's move on. So what we're going to go through here in about 15 minutes is we're going to talk about Google Drive folders where we can have like a production or test folder, and then you can have another folder for developers. So in this case, we're talking about what if you're doing a add-on and it's very popular, and now you need a team of developers to help to maintain one or various add-ons. So this is a team environment. Uh, so we're going to talk about what is GitHub briefly, and then we're going to introduce um, a Chrome extension that supplements the existing script editor IDE. And then we'll have a setup GitHub to become master source in that Google Drive. And the point there will be, instead of your source being within Google Drive, we're actually going to use a version control software of GitHub. Then we're going to have each developer push to their GitHub branch, which I'll explain in further detail. Then once that's done, you can merge it with the master. And if there are any conflicts among the developers, it can be reconciled there. And then once that's done, we want to have a separate instance for our production or, or our test uh, version, if you will. So in that case, you open up another copy, another instance of, a, of that Google App script. You want to pull in from the version control software uh, from that master. And then finally, you just do your normal Google Apps script publishing. So let's go through some of this in more detail. So keep it in the cloud by creating folders in Google, Google Drive. So one simple way of doing it, OK, I'm going to have a production folder and a, and a list of developers folders. Now, it is possible to have the developer folders independent via another account, but let's just go with this. So then the developers could be someone like Bruce, Martin, myself, or whomever. Um, so there's this like management of version control. And so we want to have these buckets that are separated is the point here. You could have maybe a production environment. You can maybe have a test folder for QA purposes and then the raw development of the code too. Okay, so what is GitHub? Well, you can see here that we're going to focus on the part of the GitHub of its version control repository. It handles things very nicely. It's widely used. In fact, I think Google themselves use it. So that's what we're going to focus on. And we're going to show you how to uh, interact with the script IDE with this version control software. <clears throat> so the way that is done, someone has written a very nice uh, Chrome extension. It's called Google Apps Script GitHub Assistant. And we can provide the link after our broadcast. And once you click that link, it'll be a quick, uh, easy install. And then what you'll notice is when you open up your Google Script Editor, the IDE, it will now have a supplemental menu options, to, as you can see here, to the right of the select function. It will have a repository, branches, the ability to push or to pull from. So to set this up, we want to, again, focus on the, the main point here of what we're saying. Google Drive is not the hosting, is not hosting the master source copy, but version control is, right? So we have to have that mindset that the the, the main source, the Bible, if you will, is is the GitHub repository. So that's where we trust where all the versions are, and especially our master, OK? So you can use the script IDE to set up a project in GitHub by using the repository and branch, which is interesting. So you don't have to spend all your time in GitHub to setting things up. You have some ability to do it within the script IDE itself. For example, in the screenshots here, you could create a repository by clicking the drop down and click Create the new repo. 
And then once that happens, you have a pop-up. You can enter the name, description, and if you want public or private, and create. And in a similar sense, you can do the same thing with branches. So each developer could create a branch that is designated for them. So that's what can happen there. Okay. Now each developer can push to the designated GitHub branch. All right. So in other words, a developer has their own copy of the latest source. They, then they make edits. And next, they need to push the entire code to the GitHub, our version control software. So in this example, I have like Steve version 2 in the screenshot. So once I make my edits to the code, and while other developers are editing their stuff, what I can do is to say, okay, I'm done with my task of maybe adding a function or, or to my code, let's say. So at this point, we want to uh, push my branch up to that version control software of GitHub. Now, I do want to make a point here, as you can see in the last uh, sentence here, that once you've done that task, and then you're assigned another task of that source, uh, let's say you have to add another function. Well, you want to make sure you're in sync with the master. So in that case, you say, OK, I'm going to open up my script. I'm going to assume there's been other uh, merging and things like that with other developers. I want to make sure I get the latest code here. So you can click pull from the master to make sure you have the latest instance of the live production environment, let's say. And now when you make your edits, you, you are confident that you're not going to override anything. Now, once you go through and you push a, uh, let's say you added that function to the source code and you pushed it to your, to your branch, there's now work involved to say, well, I want to sync that with the master copy. And this is where the GitHub uh, version control is very nice, right? You can say, okay, I want to um, compare the master with my particular branch. So you choose your branch and then you then I'll do a demo of this in just a moment. And then you go through a few clicks and then you're done. Now, if there are any conflicts between your code and another developer, which could happen, right? Uh, you can resolve those conflicts right within the GitHub software. <clears throat> okay. So now let's talk about uh, a publisher. So again, we're talking about a team environment of developers. You can have more than one person playing a role of the publisher, but let's define what, what I mean by that. It's the, it's the person who is responsible to copy or migrate or publish to the live production or even test instances. So yes, you could say each developer, you have to do this, or you could say, no, I want a more control in this situation. Maybe I want to wrap it with a change management process that I may have. I want to have a designated publisher. So it could be an independent person. So for example, here, if Bruce and Martin complete respective code edits and we're merged to the master in GitHub, now it's time to pull the changes into a test or live instance. The publisher, let's say maybe I'm playing that role, would open the Google Apps script within the production folder, which is a separate instance, right? And pulls from the master. And then I would just simply perform the normal publishing process that comes out of the box of Google Apps script. You could publish the add-on or a web app. So before we go into questions, let me do a demo. So here we have my production folder and developers folder. And I'm one of the, the uh, developers, Steve. So let's open up a sample project here. And let's say I want to add a new function as my task. Okay, so I just made a change, so I'll click Save. So now I want to make sure I'm going to the right repository, which project. I want to push it to my developer instance, that branch, and I want to push it up to the GitHub repository. It shows me the differences as a confirmation to say yes, that's what I did. I can enter a comment, click push, then I get a confirmation. Now at this point, let's say each developer is responsible to do 
the merging with the master. So then the developer would open up their GitHub. And this could be private or it could be public. In this case, with GitHub, you can pay a, a service. Uh, I think it's a $7 fee per month to be able to have private um, repositories. So here I have the branch master. I want to do a pull request. And I want to compare with my branch. And then it brings this up. It's able to merge. And I simply click create my pull request. Now, if there's any conflicts with other developers, uh, this is where you can use this software to resolve the conflict. So you can learn more about that on your own, but this remain focus on here. So now we just say merge pull request and confirm. And we are done. So now let's say uh, I'm going to play the role of the publisher, the person who is responsible of getting this update to the, either test or live production environment. So let's say we're doing the live production. So this is a separate instance of the source code, separate from the developers. So in this case, I want to open that. Actually, it looks like I used the wrong sample project. I was supposed to do dev, but we can still continue. So let's pretend I did this correctly the first time. So I open up this. So this is the production one. And now we want to pull from the uh, back from the GitHub into the production one. So we will choose the master. I want to pull that in. But of course, I have done this out of, out of order here, so I apologize. So let's click pool. It says, okay, I'm going to add a new function. I'm going to pull that in. Then it refreshes the screen. And so this is really, really nice because let's say you have dozens of files here. It's going to update all those files that quickly. So now we're, we're just wrapping things up. It's time to go ahead and deploy it as a web add-on and follow the normal publishing procedures or the web app, what have you. So that's basically it. And are there any questions? Looks like a great integration. Awesome. I, I use GitHub a lot myself and um, it's, it's a Chrome extension I'm, I'm very fond of as well. Um, but um, I suppose uh, that leads on nicely, but it, it leads on nicely to, um, I think, what Bruce is going to talk about for the next um, five minutes, um, where one of the nice things about GitHub is it has its own API. Um, so as well as um, as Steve was doing a very, uh, you know, uh, manual process, it, it is also possible to automate the process as, as, as well. Um, so, Bruce, I don't know if you want to, to, to take it from there. I have one question about, one question about the, the Chrome extension. Uh, being a Chrome extension developer myself, uh, I wonder how often it breaks when Google changes their HTML or something. I did take a quick look before the presentation. Actually, I think it was last evening. And the developer of the Chrome extension is very active of making changes and it seems to be being well attended to. So, so far, so good for that. Um, another question from Faustino is um, when you pull um, files from the Git repo, is it going to pull all the files or just um, the files that a, a single it's file? A single that's a good question. It will pull all files. So if if there are 10 developers and you all did different things and you want to update your main production source, you want everything to come over. So it does all files.